Have you ever heard of President's Day? Well, it is a holiday celebrated nationwide every third Monday of the month of February. This year, it is on February 15th. President's Day, also called Washington's birthday, has a backstory that dates back to the long time ago in American history and is still celebrated today. Originally, it was to honor the first president of the United States, George Washington. It became an official holiday in the year 1885. Then, the Uniform Monday Holiday Bill that became official in 1968 made many U.S. federal holidays fall on a Monday. In an argument at that bill, a subject came up to the make the name Washington's birthday become President's Day. That was to make it celebrate both George Washington and Abraham Lincoln's birthdays, which are both in February. Although at first, Congress did not accept the adjustment, in 1971, when the bill became active, people started to acknowledge the name, President's Day. In conclusion, President's Day is a holiday to honor not only Presidents George Washington and Abraham Lincoln's birthdays in February, but it is also seen to be celebrating other Presidents too. During President's Day long weekend, schools, banks, post offices, and other places are not open in honor of President's Day. This is why we celebrate President's Day. Which president's nickname was Old Man Eloquent? Which president had the rivalry with Andrew Jackson? That president would be our sixth president, John Quincy Adams. John Quincy Adams served one term in office from 1825 to 1829. He was part of the Democratic and Republican Party. His vice president was John Caldwell Calhoun. Adams had an interesting beginning, presidency, and as well as a successful life after serving his one term. John Quincy Adams was born on July 11, 1767 in Braintree, Massachusetts, into the time of the American Revolution. In his early life, he traveled with his father John Adams and learned how to speak fluently in French and Dutch. When the revolution ended, he returned to the United States and went to Harvard. In 1787, he graduated from college and became a lawyer. Under George Washington, John Adams, and James Madison, he was an ambassador for other countries. He was sent under, under Jeff Thomas Jefferson and under James Monroe, he became the Secretary of State. In his role as the Secretary of State, he did many things. Of those include helping to write an important document known as the Monroe Doctrine and gaining the state of Florida from Spain. Then in 1825, Adams ran for president against Andrew Jackson and Henry Clay in the election. No one won the majority of votes. So the decision was passed onto the House of Representatives. They had a vote to determine the president. In the end, Adams won the election. However, a lot of people thought it was not a fair win. Later, during his presidency, he tried passing a law that would help American businesses. That law was to tax imports that came in. He also had proposals to create things like a national university, a national observatory for astronomy, and an academy relating to warships. Finally, another thing that he wanted for the US was to build more roads and waterways. Though people who supported Jackson that were in Congress declined most of his bills that he proposed. All in all, John Quincy Adams had many ideas to improve the country, but not a lot of the laws were passed. In his later life, he became a part of the House of Representatives. As a member, he did many other things, such as going to Congress to testify against the growth of slavery. He also contributed to creating the Smithsonian Institution, which is a research institution with an assemblage of museums. However, he died of a stroke on February 23, 1848. Finally, here are some interesting facts about John Quincy Adams. Did you know that in 1779, he wrote a journal? Throughout his life, he wrote about 50 volumes. Also, because of his rivalry with Andrew Jackson, he did not go to his hair's inauguration, making him one of the three presidents who did it. And last but not least, in a study, it was found that among the, all the US presidents, John Quincy Adams was the healthiest. These are a few interesting facts about our sixth president. 
To conclude, although John Quincy Adams did not have a very impactful presidency, he was our sixth president who tried to do good for our country. Quote, no terms except an unconditional and immediate surrender can be accepted. Unquote. Our 18th president, Ulysses S. Grant, also nicknamed Unconditional Surrender Grant, once said. Ulysses S. Grant was our president for two terms, from 1869 to 1877. He was part of the Republican Party, and his vice presidents were Schuyler Colfax and Henry Wilson. Grant had a roller coaster ride of events throughout his life, from his times in the Army to his presidency. Grant was born in Point Pleasant, Ohio on April 27, 1822. He moved to Georgetown, Ohio the year after with his parents. Then, in 1839, he went to the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. He graduated in 1843 and had a reputation as a very good horseman. He became a brevet second lieutenant in Jefferson Barracks, Missouri, in the 4th United States Infantry. Grant also fought in the Mexican-American War. A year later, he met his future wife, Jolie Dent, and they married in 1848. Ulysses S. Grant was then re relocated to many army posts, which left him away from his family. However, later in 1854, he left the, he left the military and went to Whitehaven in Missouri. He tried new careers in this time here. Finally, he decided to move to Illinois in 1860. In 1861, the Civil War sparked. Ulysses S. Grant volunteered to help with his military experience. Although at first it was difficult for him to get an appointment, he eventually got to lead a voluntary military unit. He took what he learned from observing the leaders in the Mexican-American War and used this to help him. In September of 1861, he realized the unit was ready for battle. From the autumn of 1861 to April 1865, with some public ups and downs, Grant led the troops through many battles, captured land, and attacked enemies. Then, in April 1865, the Confederate Army General Robert E. Lee surrendered his troops, letting the Civil War finally end. After that, Grant became an Army General. In 1868, Ulysses S. Grant ran for president. In the election, he ran up against Horatio Seymour and won. He officially became president in 1869. During his presidency, he was an advocate of having civil rights for people who were slaves before in their lives. He also worked on the 15th Amendment. This amendment was to give people who were African American voting rights. Grant also signed a law opposed to the Ku Klux Klan as well. However, in his second term, he was not as popular due to scandals. After Grant's presidency, he decided to take his wife to go on a tour around the world. On his tour, he was crowded by many people because he was still considered very famous. He returned to the U.S. and moved to New York and started to invest money into a firm. Though the firm became destitute, which made Grant become bankrupt because he needed he still needed to take care of his family. He created a biography about his experience in war that made a huge profit. However, he was later diagnosed with cancer. Ulysses S. Grant died on July 23, 1885. Finally, here are some interesting facts about Ulysses S. Grant. First, did you know that Grant's name was originally Hiram Ulysses Grant? On their recommendation to go to West Point, the congressmen mistakenly wrote down Ulysses S. Grant instead, and Grant just kept it. Also, during his campaign, his slogan was, Let us have peace. These are a few interesting facts about Ulysses S. Grant. In conclusion, Ulysses S. Grant was not only a leader during the Civil War, but he was also the United States' 18th president. Welcome to the Brookville Media Project. I'm Alexis. I'm Neha. And I'm Kanak. Have you heard of anxiety? If you haven't, that's okay, because we'll be talking about the subject today. There is a difference between having anxiety and being anxious. 
Anxiety is a mental disorder that can be diagnosed, but being anxious is just an emotion. When you're feeling anxious, you feel uneasy, worried, and nervous about situations with minimal stress. These kinds of situations can include taking a test, presenting something, or being worried if you did something wrong. To resolve this, something most people do is take deep breaths, then count to 10. Also, try to talk to others you feel comfortable with to solve this problem. If you have anxiety, you feel more flustered about normal situations and can have excessive panic attacks. These uneasy and nervous feelings can become serious, which can prevent you from doing your hobbies and can stand in your way of school and family. Symptoms of having panic attacks is being extremely nervous and restless, as well as hyperventilating, which means fast breathing that makes you lose oxygen. Other symptoms include increased heart rate and sweating. It seems like you have no control over your stress and it overcomes you. You might be wondering, oh no, I'm really anxious right now, but how do I deal with it? Well, the first thing you can do is take three deep breaths and then step back from your problem. Try to relax by doing things you love for a few minutes, such as listening to music, eating, and sleeping. Have you heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Well, it's a pyramid that organizes your needs, and when you complete them, you move on to the next level until you become happy. Five levels are in order from bottom to top. Basic needs, safety, love, esteem, and self-accusation. Starting off with your basic needs. Make sure you get your food, water, sleep, and a roof over your head. Once these tasks are fulfilled, you move on to safety. In order to move on, you need to feel protected. It's up to you and the people around you, your parents, school, and the city to help you with that. Soon, you'll move on to love. Love and belongingness have to do with friends, family, and mostly people you care about, as well as people who care for you. You will also need esteem. Esteem means respect, and we need that for us, ourselves as well as others. The last level is self-accusation. If you can't believe that you can do something, it will never get done. Remember, it is also normal to go back and forth on the pyramid. Another thing you can do is try and find the cause of your anxiety. If you find things that trigger your anxiety, you can learn how to better cope with them. Some general triggers include mental and or physical trauma, phobias, or an overload of work. When you're facing anxiety, try to avoid any negative thoughts, and if you're comfortable with it, talk it out with a close one. If you prefer to work things out alone, go out for some fresh air. Fresh air is scientifically proven to help you calm down and work efficiently. Try to talk to an adult or even a friend if you choose to, and figure out a plan that lets you be relaxed and stress-free. Remember, it's completely normal to have anxiety. I know some of my friends face anxiety and adults who do as well. You just need to remember to stay positive and set goals. If you're stressed due to overload of work, try, and sp try splitting your assignments into separate days. You can also leave yourself positive quotes to motivate you. Another option is to keep a diary to let out your thoughts, produce some art to let out all your feelings or any other hobby that you enjoy. We hope this helps you and remember to stay safe and healthy. Thank you. See you next time on the Brookville Media Project. Bye. Bye.